Okay, so uh, 925 hours in 12 minutes, as I titled this video. This was the past Friday uh, with the NQ, and uh, that trade, the entry would have occurred right here, where I had the little circle, and then 12 candles on this one-minute chart later, it would have reached uh, 925 hours, and it, and it did go on for further profit. Now, uh, I did not trade I did not take that trade, although I did have a decent day on Friday. You can see that my total was 3600 And just a quick review of this report uh, that's provided in Ninja, and some of the things that I look at that are important, is I'll look at the profit factor right here, uh, and I also look at the probability of risk of ruin right here, and I look at the win rate, and I look at the average win versus average loss. That's less than what I'd like it to be, but uh, with a decent win rate, you know, that's okay. And then uh, I also look at how long I'm in an average trade. You can see I'm a, a, a true scalper, I guess you'd say, an ex ex uh, extreme scalper. And um, what else? Uh, I also look at the average uh, maximum adverse excursion versus the maximum favorable excursion. That's just telling you how much did price go against you while you were in that trade and uh, before you exited either with a profit or a loss. Uh, so there was a decent day but this trade I did not take but I thought it was a good illustration of uh, of the setup uh, and that setup would have been accomplished with um, a couple of things. Uh, I've got uh, you can see um, you can see my uh, TDI uh, trading Dynamics Index, uh, which is one that I've custom built and made some modifications from the, the, the standard one that you'll find in the industry. It's a little faster. I call it the fast TDI because it reacts, reacts faster, but still very reliable. Uh, you can see that the green price line uh, came up, uh, broke above the red signal line and also the gold brownish baseline. Uh, and the baseline was flat or rising, which is important to me. And then it actually broke out of the uh, Bollinger Band right there, which is always, well, I, I can't say always, but is very often indication of good, strong price momentum uh, to follow. Uh, and then uh, additionally, uh, you know how much I like my volume indicator. We had the rising buy volume and the falling sell volume. Now, what I've done is uh, a couple days ago, I added these dots. Now, what are these dots? That's telling me that I had two price candles rising. Uh, I mean, one was higher than the pri prior uh, uh, price candle. So you can see these two uh, greens. So the, this is higher than that green. And in, at the same time, I had a, a falling selling uh, volume candles. And so you can see the red drop lower right here. So uh, I'm trying to pick up when the volume is in favor. And you might say, well, gosh, you got dots all over the place. Well. I've, I've built it so I can I can show all the dots, which I like to see when I go back and study my charts and look for entries. But uh, I can also disable all the charts and show only the most current uh, dot so that it doesn't clutter my chart. So so I like seeing that. Um, and the, uh, uh, the other thing is uh, on this entry, if I hold my global cursor right here, now let's take a look to the left. Um, and I can't move my cursor over there to point your way over there because if I do, you know, it all moves, right? So I'm going to park my cursor right here, and I'll do it by verbal descriptions. The topmost uh, thumbnail chart, that small chart, if you look down, it says co correlation. And that's actually uh, uh, solving for how correlated is the... Um, uh, the uh, NQ to the uh, ES and also the um, Dow Jones Industrial and Dow Jones Transportation Average. And if you are familiar with correlation, you know that a, a number one correlation means that the, the um, data being studied is almost identical in its uh, data points. So you can see right there um, that uh, at this point, uh, see I can't Let's see if I can move it over. <laughs> okay, uh, right up at the top here, you can see that uh, the blue is actually the Nasdaq, 
but the others were uh, nearly 100% correlated to one another, and the NASDAQ was going out doing what it wanted to do on its own. But it also uh, came down uh, low and came back on, up and joined it uh, right, uh, right there, uh, w which is at the which is the bottom, which is the low right here. And uh, by the way, this is the daily VWAP, which is another uh, excellent uh, uh, thing to look for uh, in uh, looking for a, a potential bounce. And uh, you can almost call this a uh, a uh, bullish flag right here, right, right in that area right there. Uh, and and when this happens, when this comes down to a this this is the default VWAP. It started at uh, the opening of the trade day. Um, you know, I begin looking for evidence that price is going to reverse itself, uh, which you know we've got the volume, we have the the TDI, and then you look over to my thumbnail charts, and you can see that that correlation uh, is uh, you know just about 100%. Um, there's another a tool that I have created, and that's um, that's where I've taken uh, I've taken the the ES, I've taken the Nasdaq, I've taken the Dow Jones Industrial and the Dow Jones Transportation, and I wanted to see when they are in a nice tight uh, uh, thread, I guess you'd say, right? So you see how uh, they came down to this oversold area down in here. And I color it green because if something's oversold, I'm expecting it to reverse up and go long on the long side. So you can see right there it was extreme. And if I look at the the uh, price, over, it was extreme right about here. So uh, I see it coming down to the, the daily VWAP. And then I see this starting to rise uh, towards in, in a long fashion. And they're all correlated. Again, they're all correlated together so they're not arguing like they were over here. See there's a little bit of difference over here. Uh, so that was another source of uh, confirmation for me. And then of course, <coughs> excuse me, I have my three RSIs. If you look over here, these different time zones, uh, this is the um, uh, this is the two minute, four minute, six minute RSI and I change those time frames from time to time. So if you see them different in other videos, you know, I don't hesitate to change them to, you know, maybe three, three, six, and nine, or three, six, and twelve, or or whatever. And it may not make a whole lot of difference, but I've got uh, confirmation with the RSIs where they've reversed back up in in the green, and then also we have the uh, up down uh, volume here. If I put my cursor right at my entry point, you can see that uh, it looks like the suggestion that the the up volume was now headed up and the down volume is headed down. And then at the very bottom here, you can see that uh, the advanced decline is looking bullish with the green starting to sw a swing up and the red swing down. And the other thing that's interesting, I, th I find, is this tick chart. This is just simply a, a chart of ticks. And uh, I find that, um, uh, and I've, I've, I've been told by other Good traders that when the ticks uh, fall below uh, the 400 range, uh, which is right in here, you can see this is a low a low point right here. As a matter of fact, let me enlarge that chart so you can see it. Look how that came right down there. Uh, you know that's an extreme extension at that point, right? So when that extreme relative to the other other uh, values. When that extreme happens to the downside, the market has a tendency to want to want to go ahead and uh, reverse up, and that and sure it did right here. And did I cover? Every, I think I covered everything as far as the thumbnails are concerned. Um, and um, now here we have this is an engulfing candle, the white. And it's uh, hard to see, but there's a letter E there for engulfing. I'd rather see a, a long engulfing down at the end of a long uh, fall in price, uh, just as I like to see uh, short engulfing, uh, like you see here at, at the top of the range. And uh, I find that just, I think they're more, uh, more reliable. But uh, put it all together and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a, um, 
I guess, a revealing way to trade. Oh, and, and look over here. We had a pullback. A couple of things I'd like to show you here. Let me put a anchored VWAP right at the low point right here. And you can see that the uh, price, as it so often does, comes down to the anchored VWAP. Now, what else was there? Well, the opening range high, this blue right here, that blue line, that is the that represents the highest price of the first hour of the New York session. And this opening range high here in white color, that's the opening high of the first 30 minutes. And this red opening range high is the first 15 minutes. And I like to keep an eye on that because price has a, has a habit of uh, responding to those levels. And sure enough, look at all that we had, all this confluence. Price comes down, touches not only the anchored VWAP, but also that opening range based on the 60 day, I'm, I'm sorry, the first 60 minutes of the New York. And then we look to see some confirmation of price action. And sure enough, here's our green price line cuts above the signal line, the red one and the, and the baseline, the gold one. And it's, uh, it's above the 50, which is a bullish. And then do we have any, um, anything in the volume area? Well, we get one right here. This green dot tells me that the, I've had two in a row rising green volume candles and two in a row falling red vo uh, selling uh, volume candles. And uh, so that would give another opportunity uh, to, uh, to get into that trade. So if we were to have gotten in that trade and we'd, uh, well, let me see. I think I have this, my risk reward tool assigned to my, one of my, um, sim, sim, uh, account so if I click on this and say okay I'm going to get in here I've got this green dot that tells me volumes looking good and everything else looks good I have this thrust bar so let's say we get in on the opening the following and I like to keep a risk of uh, about half a percent uh, so there's four that's 0 0.49 percent and um, so if we were to do a three to one uh, looks like we would have achieved that as well, $420 profit uh, just with one contract and putting $140 at risk, which represents almost a half a percent of the account. So um, uh, and let's see what else is, what else might be helpful. Let's go back. I covered that. See if there's anything else that might be um Let's see, this is, it was 10.50 on the, in the morning. So again, you can see that our TDI is falling down. And uh, look, at our, look at the top uh, thumbnail uh, chart. Uh, I just called it the Z factor. You can see where that, right up, right up there. It's low, it's in, in the oversold area. So that's, that gets me to thinking, okay, if it's oversold, it's gonna, maybe want to reverse so I look for signs of the reversing and uh, here is uh, it's basing in this area got a double bottom right there right so what else might we get if I put my cursor let's say right here um, we've got um, well let's see once again once again, we have we had that low on the tick chart right there, right? And let's see, let me get back here. It's tough when I have this uh, global cursor on. I'm just trying to identify where the would be a good entry. So we said, let's say right here, I like the TDI. That looks good. I like my volume. So if we had an entry right there, um, and if we were to use our stop below these, the, the double bottom right there, and let's say we get in right uh, there, and looks like uh, that would have been a wonderful, and what time was that? Was, uh, that was 11 o'clock Friday morning. So, um, you know, that, uh, that would have been a dandy, right? If I click on this, love these, love these um, great risk reward trades. There's, there's six. 
And it got up as high as there anyway. By what time was that? That was uh, just a few minutes before noon. And that would have been a nice trade. That would be putting $385 at risk um, with a, I guess that's pretty much a maximum right up in here, about a 5 to 1 return. But again, using our confirmation, watching price action and also watching uh, for confirmation with our with our indicators. And let's just see how that played with the opening ranges as well. We see that it came up. See how there was some hesitation here? There's the opening range based on 60 minutes. Um, actually kind of bounced around a little bit between the 60 month, I'm sorry, the 60 and the 30 minute opening range. Right highs right there. And, uh, and away to the races it went. So that's um, kind of a review of, of at least a couple opportunities last, this past Friday. And hope it gives you some insight. And if you found some value in this, you know, I'd encourage you to hit the subscribe button and also the like button. And when you do subscribe, uh, it might make sense for you to uh, toggle that thing that uh, gives you a notice anytime I might uh, post a new, a, a new uh, video. So take care.